This is what you've received with our direct line under counter UV system. It's quite a few components, but it's basically the main unit with the UV light already attached to it. Your first filter, a one micron sediment filter to remove dirt. KDF filter second, which is uh, to remove chlorine, heavy metals, smells and tastes. And then uh, ultrafiltration membrane, which is your first barrier to block bacteria. And then la the last barrier would be the UV light, which is then added for extra safety. You'll receive two of these tubes in the UV lights box. One is a quartz tube, which fits into the UV light first. The second is the actual UV light bolt. Very, very importantly, are these um, O-rings. Make sure you don't lose them because they're very difficult to find. And um, where we try to, to keep stock, we don't always have them. Then we have the UV lights ballast, a length of a flexible hose, and a spanner for when you need to change filters. Okay. The first thing to do on um, this system is let's just fit the normal uh, free filters at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, just move the UV lights out of the way, they're a little bit sensitive. Simply unscrew the housings at the bottom of the unit. And you'll see the unit is marked with, it, with an in and an out. The nice thing with the UV unit, the out will automatically be going um, to the UV light. So you know, to start with the sediment filter on the side where it's marked for an uh, incoming connection. It's a good idea just to get someone to help you just to hold the, the, the top part of the unit, just to make life a little bit easier with attaching these housings. Be careful not to cross spread the housings and normally tightening by hand should be sufficient and um, only use the spanner um, in a case where you are finding that the unit is leaking and not tightening enough it's got a double o-ring seal here on a taper surface so normally you wouldn't need uh, anything more than just tightening by hand so we're putting the kdf in the middle housing here and then finally the ultrafiltration membrane fits in the final housing. The ultrafiltration membrane um, is a little bit more finicky. It's got quite a hard seal at the top, so you need to give it quite a hard tightening to be able to get the gaps the same on all three housings. So, good, good tight. Yes, they all look the same, and the spanner wasn't required. If you do use the spanner, be careful not to tighten it to an extent that you won't be able to get it loose again. Okay, then the next step would be fitting our quartz tube in the, the UV system. If you unscrew the end caps here, first step, there's two, two different end caps, one with a blank and one with a hole. The side of the hole is where the UV light this tube itself will, will be fit in. Taken those off, then we open these packages. The one with the thicker tube inside is the quartz tube. This is the first one you will need. It's sealed with staples. We've already taken the staples out just to save some time. Just be careful when removing them and uh, remove them before removing the quartz tube as if you leave them and can scratch the glass. the coarse quartz tube itself. From either end you then carefully place it in the middle, gently slide it through. It is a bit fragile so be careful in this process. And then you're going to take your two o-rings, one for either side, and you'll simply slide that over the over the tube just over and slide it in a little bit. Okay, and same on the other side. As you can see it from the video there, they do need to stretch quite a bit to actually fit over. Then roll them until you have it tight against the middle. 
and both sides are connected, as you can see there, then take the side you don't want to put the um, UV bulb in, which is typically be the one where the, you have all the pipe. Take the end cap with um, which is blanked off, push that over here, and tighten it lightly. But really, be careful when tightening this. This is will then be where it seals. But uh, don't tighten it too much, as the glass tube is quite fragile, and you don't want to be breaking the tube. Let me take the other side. And really with this what we'd suggest is just tighten lightly with two fingers first and then see if you have any leaks when connecting the system. If you have a leak somewhere, give it a little bit more tighten, but never tighten with a spin. With your hand should always be a, be enough. If it's if it's leaking and it's already tight, the O ring isn't correctly in position, so rather open it up and redo do that side of the connection. So now we've got the hole on this side and it's blocked off on this side and we've got the quartz tube in place. What you could do now is actually check the system for, um, for leaks. So where it's designed to fit in is typically under a basin you would have this attached to the faucet and this attached to the other end attached to the wall where you typically have a valve. This is a half inch um, flexible hose. Disconnect the hose from, or close the valve, disconnect the hose from the wall and then check if the hose you have under there is still nice and flexible can see here they if, if they're in good condition they really are very flexible as it's a rubber hose with sort of a braided cover over it. If it's if it's hard to bend it, rather get a new hose because it might mean that the hose will be brittle and that it um, <coughs> it will have a good chance to leak and also the seal sealing surface might already be hard and then you'll struggle to actually get a good seal on the system. So take the one connected to the to the faucet, the existing one, or if the new one if you've had to replace it, and that you would just connect onto the top of the UV light here. And just tighten that there. So then if that side's connected to the faucet, and then take the flexible hose that's supplied with the system then and connect it to your incoming side on the system itself. This is a, a plastic connection, so don't over tighten it or be, and be very careful of cross threading it as you can damage it. Uh, we, we put this con male connection here as a separate fitting um, to make it simple that if you damage it, you can go to a builder's warehouse or hardware store and just get a replacement fitting for this. And then the other side, you connect back to your valve on the wall. First thing to do is with the, the force open, just start letting a little bit of water run through the system and check if you have any leaks. The places you want to check for leaks, here we've connected it at these two points from the edges of the UV lights and here around the top edges of the filter housings. Um, if you find no leaks running at low pressure, close the faucet at the top, let the pressure build up and um, then have, if, if you, there is any um, leaks, if it's on these fittings, redo the connections or check it might be the hose that's um, old if it's on the old, old hose connection and with the connections on the housings just check that um, they're tightened properly if you find you have a small small leak coming from one tighten it a little bit with the span to see if it goes away if it doesn't just open the housing again and refit it and that should um, should solve any leaking problems so okay so now we've got a system which is pressurized and leak tested and we know the system from the system side we're good to go the next thing to look at is your ballast. Firstly, you need to connect the power to, to the one side, so you need to run your cabling so you can have access to the power. And then on the other side, this will connect to the UV bulb. It, it is a four pin connection. You'll see there's the one side is slightly longer than the other one, so it can be connected. Um, 180 degrees and it doesn't matter which way around and then this is just a cover to um, block any light from escaping from the UV as it can damage your eyes. So now we take, oh, that one we've already taken, we take the, <laughs> the other tube. Again, you'll see this is a smaller protective covering. 
same thing applies. You take the staples out um, completely, carefully. Be very careful not to damage the bulb. Very gently nudge the bulb out. We've already taken the staples out here. Be careful to uh, not to damage the pins on the bulb as they are very sensitive. So basically, the bulb has got a four-pin connection similar to the plug. And uh, these pins you need to be careful of when you're actually removing the system. So the first step would be don't touch the actual bulb because fingerprints and that will get hot and you can, could damage the glass. So connect the bulb to its power supply. There, now the, the bulb is, is connected. And simply through the side that, that has the open hole, slide in the bulb, slide in the plug with the bulb, and then place the light cover over the whole fitting so it seals. And then you can turn the, the bulb on by plugging in the ballast. It has a status light here, which um, it will tell you if something is wrong and when it has power. And yes, now basically the system, everything's hooked up and good to go. So open the faucet, let it run um, for a good 15 minutes. The spinal cartridge, the ultrafiltration, will need to be flushed thoroughly as it's, uh, the membrane is preserved in a, a preservative that needs to get out of the, whole, out of the system. Uh, so if after 15 minutes you still have, it almost looks like a little bit of an oily layer on the water, let it flush a little bit longer. And as soon as that oily layer is gone, it should be um, ready to use. And now you've got a cold water line that's connected up, filtered, and uh, good to go.